While you're scouring through the commonwealth looking for loot, caps, and bobbleheads, you may come across a trader or two sporting the Vault 81 jumpsuit. Talk to them and they'll tell you that they grew up in Vault 81. You'll get it marked in your map. You may think, a working vault? Now that's something you don't hear about every day. How did these people survive the ordeal that vault Tech must have set up for them? So you make your way to Vault 81 and you're greeted by their overseer, who tells you to get some fusion cores to be allowed in. Fulfill this task and you gain access to the thriving Vault 81, looking like an example of what everyone before the war thought the vaults would be. A community working for each other. They grow their own food, have their own shops and a classroom, and there's even a nice old lady making sweets. It seems that vault Tech didn't perform any crazy experiments here, and the people have lived contently for over 200 years. This vault looks like paradise. It's a safe haven where you can get a haircut, tell kids about your grand deathclaw killing adventures, and even relax with some of grandma's home cooked meals. But is that really all there is to Vault 81? Did vault Tech make a vault with no hidden intentions? Nothing to study? Maybe, but maybe not. After being in the vault long enough, you hear that one of the local kids, Austin, is sick. The resident junkie, Bobby DeLuca, reveals Austin got bit by a mole rat while checking out Bobby's stash of drugs. This stash is near an apparently hidden section of the vault, one that no one knew about except for Bobby. He also says that there's some notes about mole rat diseases and vaccinations in this hidden vault. So you are tasked with going to this secret vault and finding the cure to Austin's illness. And thus, the real, darker side of Vault 81 emerges. Follow Bobby to the reactor room and he shows you the door leading to the hidden side of Vault 81. But before heading on, you may notice a terminal off to the side marked Old Overseer's Terminal. This terminal is master level, so you're going to need some pretty good hacking chops if you want to gain access. However, if you can break in, the true identity of Vault 81 becomes readily apparent. This terminal houses information for the first overseer of Vault 81, Dr. Olivet. Inside it, you can find a plethora of information about Olivet, Vault 81, and the plans Vault Tech had for it. Olivet was chosen for the position of overseer due to skills in administration and medical research. These skills were required due to the nature of Vault 81's experiments, secret biological study of humans, and the creation of a cure for all diseases that afflict them. Quite a lofty goal vault Tech had in mind. Vault 81's prime directive of a cure comes through three phases of clinical trials. First, on petri dishes. Second, on heterocephalus glabber specimens, or mole rats, provided by vault Tech. And third, on the human residents of Vault 81. All of these experiments were to be carried out by a team of scientists completely sealed off from the general population inside the hidden vault section of Vault 81. These trials were to give the scientists the information they need to create a complete and singular cure for all human diseases, specifically in a radiated world. The general population was to be disposed of via incineration when given the vault Tech all clear signal. Now we can see the dastardly vault Tech that we're familiar with. However, Olivet isn't on board with this plan. What starts as concern quickly evolves into a full moral crisis as Olivet realizes vault Tech's true intentions and how much influence the company has with the United States government. So, on the day the bombs fall, Olivet sabotages the phone list so that not one scientist receives the call to head into the vault. Yet three scientists, Collins, Burrow, and Flint, still manage to make it in by the time the vault door closes, and they begin their work right away. The last pieces of information exclusive to this terminal are the personal logs of Olivet. It is from here that you get a glimpse of the thoughts and motivations behind Vault 81's first overseer. From the very start, Olivet had worries about the morality of Vault Tech and this job. Once Olivet realizes what is really going to happen, a counterattack begins. Olivet prevents the scientists from getting called in, then stalls the three that made it in for time as they blow through phase one and two rapidly, and lastly, Olivet plugs the nozzles that were meant to deliver the phase three diseases to the general population. Once Burrow notices this, Olivet ceases all communication with the scientists and leaves them isolated to their section of the vault, permanently. They have food and water to last, but they must remain by themselves without any real goal in life until they die. Olivet hopes for forgiveness. Isn't Olivet doing what vault was? Sacrificing a few for the greater good? Seems like the tables may have turned on the supposed righteousness of Olivet. Now that you've gotten an idea for the goals and history of Vault 81, 
it's time to actually head into the hidden side of the vault. Upon entering, you can see the dilapidated state caused from almost 200 years of idol. Rocks and mud everywhere, several walls blown through. This is starting to look like most of the vaults we've seen in the wastelands of Fallout. Pretty soon, you'll have your first of many encounters with the special Vault 81 Mole Rats, more powerful and versatile than your average horribly irradiated post-apocalyptic mole rat. Following this is a terminal giving a little more insight into the mole rat research. The mole rats were separated into different colonies based on their aggressiveness, and some of the keepers even thought that the mole rats were watching them. As of the start of the vault, cures have been developed to eliminate 36% of known viruses, up from the previous year's 33% which is actually pretty promising. It seems that vault Tech's research was actually getting some good results. Maybe they would have actually succeeded had not Olivet sabotaged Vault 81's prime directive. Continuing on, some turret and protectron defenses need to be dispensed of. It's really still a surprise to me how these things have power to run for two centuries. And looking through the broken and decaying living quarters, you can see how this hidden vault was really supposed to be just as much of a community as the other side. Beds and dressers and tables, and even a small cafeteria just like the one in the residential section of the vault, show that even though their goal was research, and not simply surviving like the residents, the scientists were still meant to live and prosper like normal human beings. Instead, almost all of them were killed when the bombs fell, and the final three were doomed to lonely deaths soon after. As you keep progressing deeper into the vault, you'll come across many more mole rats that will attack you on sight. They're fairly tough for mole rats, some taking multiple 50 caliber rounds to be put down. Will you fulfill your duties as de facto exterminator? Another very interesting aspect of the hidden vault should appear. Observation windows. There seems to be a one-way mirror and terminal associated with some of the important rooms in Vault 81. The hydroponics or farm room, the general store, and even the overseer's room have windows and even a microphone speaker set up to listen in on the conversations of the residents. The terminals keep the scientists' notes on how each room is doing and what viruses would be good to implement via that specific room. Even with only three people, the scientists were getting a lot of work done. After the observation windows, another living area for the scientists filled with mole rat follows. Though, it appears that this is the area where the mole rats were held, so the large numbers of them and the broodmothers being here make sense. The important artifacts in this section are a vault -Tec chest and the research communications terminal for Dr. Collins. The chest has some typical loot including a pretty cool mechanics suit which might entail that there weren't only scientists destined for the hidden section of Vault 81 but also support staff such as mechanics that were meant to keep the hidden vault working for the scientists. Those are even more lives that possibly could have been saved had Olivet not sabotaged the phone list. Moving to the terminal, it archived communications between Dr. Collins and the Overseer Olivet. Collins messaged Olivet questioning why so few scientists made it to the vault and reporting mechanical failures throughout the hidden section of the vault, which could have been solved by those supposed mechanics had they been there. Eventually Collins realizes Olivet's plan to prevent their research and pleads for a response when Olivet ceases all contact. He doesn't even blame Olivet for sabotaging the research conceding that it is a breach of moral codes in the world they used to live in. But he just wants a response rather than Olivet hypocritically condemning the remaining scientists to a solidary death. But Olivet never responds. And after bypassing an expert level terminal, you can see the coffins of the three scientists, forgotten by the world and left to rot in what ended up being their cell. Olivet tried to sacrifice a few for the greater good exactly vault Tech's intentions in most of their vaults. Though that sacrifice might have taken away a possible disease-free future for humanity. Collins understood this, but couldn't do anything to challenge it. All he could do was research mole rats and die. But maybe there's a redeeming grace in all of this turmoil. Near the locker coffins of the three scientists, a Mr. Handy robot named Curie is locked in a room. She calls out to you to let you know that she has finished the research of the deceased scientist. She has developed Vault Tech's goal, an end-all be-all cure that can remedy any disease known to mankind. Yet she needs a Vault Tech employee to let her out of the room, due to protocol. Let her out and you receive the final product of Vault 81's hidden section, the cure. However, the cure is only one dose and cannot be recreated with the materials around. The cure to all human disease will only have one usage. Imagine if Olivet didn't do any sabotaging. Perhaps the scientists could have made a cure that's reproducible. 
and all the sickness in the human world would simply cease to exist. vault -Tec would have actually made a successful experiment that benefited all mankind. But that didn't happen, and instead you must live in a disease-ridden world. Oh well. Looking into Curie's room, you can find the medicine bobblehead and two terminals. The first includes Vault 81's mission statement, revealing that vault -Tec explicitly acknowledged that the needs of the many far outweigh the needs of the few. Olivet is almost a carbon copy of vault -Tec, just without the bigger picture. The second terminal is Curie's personal terminal. She records information about the three scientists, their personalities, and their deaths. Dr. Collins is the one that gives Curie the terminal and gets the others to treat her like a human. He's also the one that keeps Burroughs and Flint calm while trying to deal with the overseer sabotage. He appears to be a leader, looking out for his team. Dr. Flint is objectively brilliant and very brusque, but his speech is easy for Curie to understand. He's straightforward. Burroughs is great to work with. He does tasks like manual labor even though Curie can lift a lot more than him due to being a robot, so Burroughs is doing this out of human politeness and respect, even though Curie doesn't understand. Burroughs was the last to die due to a heart attack. Before his death, he instructed Curie on his cremation and to continue the team's research so that their deaths wouldn't be in vain. She put him in place with the other's graves and respected their last wishes. She finished the cure. Now the secrets of Vault 81 have been exposed. Head up to the residential section of the vault and choose if you want Curie to be your companion. Also, decide if you're going to take the cure yourself and incur the wrath of Vault 81's dwellers or save Austin, a kid that got sick. Do the latter and you'll receive the love and acceptance of Vault 81 and you'll even be gifted a room in the vault. So now, you can see the truth of Vault 81. Supposed to cure all human diseases and partially succeeded. Thwarted by the attempted righteousness and supposed morality of a conflicted overseer, they caused many more to die than needed. This is an unfortunate fault, but definitely much better than most others. It still produced a thriving community and did succeed in making an all-disease cure. Who knows if, without that one overseer, the world would be free from disease. All humans forgetting the looming worry of sickness and infection in the already daunting wastelands. Or maybe the scientists did manage to infect the humans of Vault 81 with some hidden disease and it has been carried on for generations, now extending throughout the commonwealth, with unknown repercussions and an unknown cure if it were ever to become active again. Unfortunately, we may never know the answers to these things. But one thing we do know is the story of Vault 81. Yo, what is up everybody, Mad Luigi here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. One thing I want to do right now is give a huge shout out to the Nth Apple. He has an amazing Fallout lore series, and I highly suggest you guys go check out some of his videos. The idea for this video came from when I was watching a couple of his videos. Now, I do really hope you guys enjoyed this. This is out of my um, normal upload zone. I normally upload tips and tricks, and I thought a lore video like this would be a really cool idea, so I'm hoping it's received well. I'm hoping you guys like it. If you do like it and you made it all the way to the end, and make sure you let me know that you liked it that I should keep doing more of these if you want to see more of these or if not let me know so that being said again thank you for watching make sure to check out more of my channel if you want more fallout 4 content I admittedly only have this is my only lore video currently up so all the other videos are going to be tips and tricks so unfortunately if you want more of this I don't have any of it however you can check out the nth apple as I said because he has a lot of amazing fallout 4 and previous fallout contents all right guys thank you for watching and peace out